Revelation 21 says in verse number 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Night John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Lord, thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you, Lord, for helping Miss Janet and for Brother Eddie to be here tonight. Thank you for helping Miss Crystal had a chemo treatment. She's in church this morning, in church tonight. Lord, thank you for grace. Thank you for that fountain of grace. And Lord, thank you for that taste of mercy. Thank you, Lord, for ever being faithful and true. Thank you for hearing and answering prayers. And thank you for being our God. Now, God, as we come to you tonight, I pray you'd help the teens over on the other side of the building, those working with them. Bless them, instruct them in righteousness. God, may those young people be insulated with the gospel and the word of God. And God, certainly help them as they go back to school and go back through the course of their lives tomorrow. May they shine as bright light to this dark world. May they impact their friends and their neighbors. Uh, use them uh, in the midst of great peer pressure to stand out and be separate for God. Uh, God, I pray for these that are here tonight, that God, you would bless and meet every need of every heart, lift every spirit, encourage everyone, and send revival. Father, I pray if anybody is amongst us unsaved, tonight would be the night of their salvation. Father, I pray for those that are sick. I do pray, Father, for Miss Crystal. I pray for Brother Eddie. I pray for Miss Janet and her upcoming heart cath. Uh, Father, I pray uh, uh, for Miss Sherry. I pray for Miss Lexi and her upcoming surgery. I pray for uh, Mackenzie, uh, uh, Brother Ron and Miss Rhonda's granddaughter. I pray for others, Brother Tony, that are sick. Uh, God, you touch their bodies. Uh, I pray for those that are providentially hindered, those that wanted to be here tonight, uh, but Lord, they're working or uh, uh, they're uh, sick. Uh, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd bless them. Uh, Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd set down amongst us in such a way uh, that, Lord, when we leave out of here, uh, it'll be said all around us that those folks have been with Jesus. Uh, Father, meet every need of every heart. Glorify your namesake. Uh, bless us tonight, we pray, uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we ask it all. Amen. Uh, Amen. Notice some things about our text. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the change. Uh, we find in verse number 1, the Bible says, uh, And I saw a new heaven uh, and a new earth, uh, for the first heaven uh, and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Uh, notice the change. Uh, uh, the heaven that we have known uh, and looked and gazed upon, uh, uh, the earth that we have enjoyed and gazed upon, and walked upon and trod upon uh, will be done away with. Uh, there will be a new heaven uh, and a new earth. Uh, get a hold of this neighbor. Uh, uh, the Lord is going to change things uh, uh, because uh, this world uh, has been sin cursed. Uh, this world uh, uh, Satan has had it as his domain. Uh, this world he has walked to and fro uh, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, uh, the heaven where God lives. Uh, uh, Satan has went before the throne of God uh, and been the accuser of the brethren. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, the new heaven and the new earth uh, will never have been tainted by 
sin uh, will never have had the sorry no good serpent of sin uh, to ever dwell upon them uh, it'll be wonderful it'll be pure it'll be holy uh, uh, what a blessing to know uh, uh, things are about to change uh, uh, there are things down here uh, I wish I could change and I can't but God's going to make a big change one of these days uh, and I'm uh, looking forward uh, uh, to the day uh, Revelation 21 becomes reality we see the change uh, I want you to notice the city in verse number 2 uh, the Bible says uh, and I heard uh, and I John saw the, the holy city uh, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven uh, uh, prepared as a bride uh, adorned for her husband uh, uh, there's a prepared city uh, for a prepared people uh, it's a new city uh, it's called New Jerusalem uh, it's a city unlike any that we've ever heard about uh, or ever saw uh, now the Bible says about this city in verse number Ten, and he carried me away to the uh, spirit uh, to a great and high mountain uh, and showed me that great city uh, the holy Jerusalem uh, descended out of heaven from God uh, uh, what kind of city is it uh, it's so special uh, it's coming from heaven uh, can I say the only thing we've ever known that came from heaven uh, was the Lord himself uh, hey what a thing uh, uh, knowing him uh, and the grace and the mercy that came with him uh, he came full of grace and truth uh, uh, can we say it's the best thing ever happened to us uh, uh, the next thing that we're going to see uh, that comes out of heaven for our benefit uh, will be this holy city a uh, uh, city for God's uh, a bride to dwell in forevermore. Uh, uh, verse 11 says it has the glory of God uh, and her light was like unto a stone most precious uh, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal uh, and had a wall great and high uh, and twelve gates uh, and uh, uh, at the gates twelve angels uh, and the names written thereon which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel uh, goes on to say uh, uh, the city's got gates uh, made of pearl uh, walls of jasper uh, there's twelve foundations of precious stones uh, and it gets down to it uh, and the, uh, uh, verse number 22 uh, and I saw no temple therein uh, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it uh, I'm talking about, friend, there's coming a city, uh, a city that God uh, has fashioned and prepared uh, that it hasn't even in, in the heart of man what God has prepared uh, for them that love him. Uh, and it's going to be something spectacular. Uh, hey, can I say there are mansions on every hilltop. Uh, there's a stream, a river, crystal clear. Uh, can I say there's a throne in the midst of it uh, and lightnings and rainbows come out of the throne where the lamb sits uh, hey neighbor what a city it's going to be uh, and God's prepared it for you and I hallelujah we see a change uh, we see a city but we also see Christ look again in verse number 3 hallelujah that's why I'm a going and I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, uh, and they shall be his people, uh, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Uh, notice the tabernacle of God is uh, with men, and he will dwell with them. He is our tabernacle. He is the object of our worship. Uh, he is our sanctuary. Uh, he is our substitute. He is uh, my dear friends uh, uh, why we worship uh, and he my dear friend uh, uh, will be there look at verse 23 and the city had no need of sun neither moon to shine in it uh, for the glory of God did lighten it and the lamb is the light thereof uh, and I say there's a change there's a city but there's Christ uh, notice his comforting in verse number 4 and God shall wipe away some tears, is that what it says? All tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. What a blessing, no graveyards in heaven. No, neither sorrow, no sadness over there. No daylight savings time. 
because time is of no essence over there, huh? A day's as a thousand years, a thousand years is a day, huh? Be one eternal day in heaven, no time, huh? Can I say, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. We ought to shout right there. No more pain. Huh? No more pain. Can I say that's physical pain? That's mental pain, mental anguish. That's broken heart pain. No more pain over there. Huh? For the former things are passed away. Uh, what comfort? Can I say I'm going to heaven for Christ? Mm, I'm going to heaven because of Christ. I'm looking forward to the scenes. But can I say, the thought of putting away this old body of clay and all the pain for what he has in store, a glorified body, and no more pain. Hallelujah, neighbor, let's go tonight. Uh, let's think about things that people deal with in their mind. Some of them painful memories. Some of them heartaches. Some of those things for years you trust God, but you wonder why. We get to heaven, neighbor. That'll all be gone. Huh? What a blessing. Huh? Be no wheelchairs in heaven. Huh? Be no walkers in heaven. Be no crutches in heaven. Huh? Be no eyeglasses in heaven. Be no hearing aids in heaven. Huh? Be no bald people in heaven. I mean, it's going to be wonderful. Hey, in Revelation 1, we find John saw him and his hair was white as wool. And we're going to get a body fashioned like Christ. If he had hair, so are you, bald-headed fella. Huh? Huh? We see the comforting but I really want to focus on the citizens in verse number 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me. Isn't that kind of amazing? Angels are going to come talk to us. And they're going to come and talk to us because they're in awe of us. Because they look at us now as sorry, no good, mud pie sinners. And then God's going to elevate us to be like Christ. Yeah, and they're going to wonder, how did that all happen? Yeah, tell and they're going to come and say, how did you get here? Let me tell you, see the lamb? That's how I got here. Huh? He said, he come and talk with me, saying, come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. What a privilege to be in the bride of Christ. Can I say to be in the bride of Christ, you've got to be born into the family of God. You've got to be adopted into the family of God. And in Revelation 19, we'll get married into the family of God. Can I say the bride of Christ is for those that have been born again by putting their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and repenting of their sins. There's no other way to get in the bride but to be born again and to be uh, uh, sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Can I say, the bride is not for the Jews. The Jews were the wife of Jehovah. The bride is uh, uh, the believers through the age of the fullness of time of the Gentiles, what we call the grace age, uh, the believers that have been born again in this grace age uh, since Jesus paid for the church on Calvary uh, and uh, was buried, rose again, and then uh, ascended back to heaven and uh, uh, the church had been established preaching the gospel for these 2,000 years. Uh, everyone that's been saved by the good grace of God, uh, we're not the wife of Jehovah. That was the Jews. Uh, we're the bride of Christ. And what a privilege for the bride. Uh, uh, the Jews inherit the earth. Uh, uh, the bride gets new Jerusalem. What a blessing Amen. to be a part of the bride. Now listen, I shouldn't go down this road, but I'm going to. A lot of false teaching on the bride. There's a lot of people that take Matthew and they preach on, uh, on the kingdom. They want to associate that with the bride. That's not dealing with the bride. That's dealing with the millennium reign. That's dealing with the kingdom of Jesus Christ. 
when he rules and reigns for a thousand years. What we're talking about, the bride, is the church age. There are other people that believe the bride is a certain select few. They believe that it's water that puts you in the bride. They say if you cannot trace your baptism, your church, back to Christ, then you won't be in the bride of Christ. Mm, there's a problem with that, Brother Ron, because over there in the book of Corinthians, Paul wrote that we're baptized by one spirit into one body. It's a spiritual baptism puts us in a bride, not the water. And by the way, it takes a church to birth a church. But good luck tracing your church background all the way back to Christ. Most of the documents had anything to do with the church during the dark ages was destroyed when many Christians were destroyed. How are you going to trace yourself all the way back to Christ? That doctrine was formulated in 1921. And it was formulated, Brother Clint, in the Southern Baptist Church. And it was formulated, it's called Old Landmarkism. And it was formulated because the church of God uh, and the tongue-speaking crowd, by the way, tongues was not ever used in America till 1901. And the first year that tongues was used was also the first year that the first false Bible was printed in America in 1901. All right? Uh, uh, and can I say that uh, uh, that tongues crowd started really growing and the other Baptist church wanted to separate them from that, uh, that movement. Uh, and they... Uh, said uh, but we're in the bride uh, they're not uh, you don't want to be a part of that mess because they're not the bride uh, and they use where John the Baptist uh, and Jesus said he was a friend of the bridegroom they said that there's the bride uh, and there'll be others there who are in the wedding party uh, who are the friends of the bride uh, the only problem is, is John the Baptist did not die in the church age he died under the law uh, he was a friend of the bridegroom uh, he wasn't in the bride. Uh, he's in uh, 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 the wife of Jehovah. He's one of them Old Testament saints. Uh, he's not one of the New Testament saints. Uh, uh, just because he lived uh, under the New Testament in Matthew don't mean he was part of the bride. Uh, and they got their doctrine all messed up. Uh, all I was saying tonight, uh, I'm glad I'm in the bride. Uh, hey, it's long been settled. Uh, when I got saved and Jesus wrote my name down the Lamb's Book of Life, uh, he recorded me and invited me. I'm part of that crowd. Blessed are they which are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. And I don't know why I got into all that. I can go into great detail if you need all the details. Huh? Uh, listen, I started hearing all this stuff when I was younger. You know what I did? I studied it. I went and found out. Because I want to know what the Bible said. Anything made of man is broken. I'd rather know what God says. But we find that he said, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife, the citizens of New Jerusalem. And I'm going to preach for a few minutes tonight on the citizens of heaven since I already killed it, talking about the bride. Uh, made the Southern Baptist people come out of Southern Baptist mad. I made folks that uh, uh, come out of Church of God mad. I made everybody mad, huh? But I'm just glad I'm in the bride. I'm trying to help y'all. If you're born again, you'll be in the bride, huh? Uh, say, Brother Doug, let me, uh, man, I hit a stump there. Let me get on it. You don't intimidate me. Lord, have mercy. Listen, what about folks that are not a part of a true church, but they're saved? What about them? Amen. Well, Brother Aaron, if somebody is saved, the Holy Spirit of promise lives inside of them. Yes, sir. And if they're not part of the true church, the Holy Spirit deals with them about that. Now, they can quench him. They can grieve him. They can deny him. But he's trying to get them out of that falseness. And if they won't get out of that falseness and they die not being part of the true church, they'll lose rewards in heaven. Judgment seat of Christ. Huh? You say, what's the true church? The one Jesus Christ formed. The one he established. The one that he commissioned. Huh? We've not always been called Baptists, but we've always had the same doctrine. Can I say, most of the denominations were started by man, not Jesus Christ. 
And denominational churches will lose rewards if they're saved. A lot of folks are saved in some of these denominations, but many of them aren't. Especially if they've, been, they've gotten involved in the last 30 years. Because they don't even preach the Bible anymore in these places. Let alone how to truly be born again. We're about to be begotten again by an incorruptible seed. It's nowhere in my message. Why are you all bogging me down with all this stuff? I'm just like, I'm in the bride. Because I got born again. And I'm thankful I'm in the church of Jesus Christ. Huh? I'm thankful I'm in the right one. I said, preacher, if you weren't a Baptist, what would you be? I'd be ashamed. That's what I'd be. I'm a Baptist by conviction. I'm not a Baptist because my granddaddy was a Baptist. Uh, listen, I'm a Baptist by conviction. I've done a whole lot more study on it and on the church and on the Bible and all those things than my granddaddy ever did. My granddaddy didn't have to study all this. There was only really one Bible he used back then. Uh, uh, but what I'm trying to say is uh, I'm not ashamed of the Bible. I'm not ashamed of the church. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the bride. Uh, and I'm glad I'm in all of it. Hallelujah. Uh, well, I want to look at the citizens of heaven. Can I say first of all tonight, there's the revilers. There'll be people in heaven who were revilers. You say, what do you mean, preacher? You remember that thief on the cross? Both of them reviled against Jesus. Both of them accused Jesus. Uh, both of them uh, made fun of Jesus. Uh, but the longer he held there, there was one conviction started welling up in him. Uh, he looked at the other and said, Hey, uh, he's not like us. Uh, and before it was all said and done, uh, he said, Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom, have mercy on me. He was a reviler, uh, but he's not anymore. Uh, and he's in heaven. Uh, there's a lot of folks uh, who used to mock the Lord, uh, who used to mock the church. Uh, who used to mock the Bible. Uh, hey, but they got to looking, uh, got to listening, uh, got to seeing what was going on. Uh, God began to speak to their hearts. Uh, they fixed their eyes on Jesus, uh, got born again. Uh, they were revilers. Uh, they'll be in heaven, uh, but they got born again. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, there'll be revilers in heaven. Uh, can I say this? Uh, there'll be rocky people in heaven. Uh, they teetered. They was in and out and up and down and in and out. Uh, they doubted along the way. Uh, you ever hear of a fellow named Thomas? Uh, hey, he doubted everything uh, for a while. Uh, I got news for you. He's in heaven tonight. Uh, there be some. Uh, they might not have been rock solid. Uh, they might have been up one week and down one week. Uh, they might have doubted along the way. Uh, but if they got born again... Uh, They'll be in heaven. Uh, there'll be some of them uh, have rocky relationships with the church, uh, rocky relationships with the uh, with the Lord Himself. Uh, but they did get born again. Uh, hey, Peter was kind of rocky uh, till he got really plugged into the rock. Uh, and look what God did. Uh, there was some who were rocky, uh, but they got born again. Uh, they'll be in heaven. Uh, they'll be a citizen of heaven. Uh, can I say tonight, uh, there'll be some ragtags in heaven uh, came for the other side of the tracks. Uh, I mean, they didn't have anything to offer the Lord. Uh, I mean, that's that crowd that was rough. Uh, that's that crowd you didn't want to go shake their hand. Uh, you didn't want to go give them a track. Uh, you didn't want to hang around them very much. Uh, but, oh, uh, Jesus came seeking to save that which lost. Uh, even the ragtags. Uh, and somebody uh, made a difference. Uh, they might have been from the other side of the tracks. Uh, they might have been wicked. Uh, they might have been uh, a, a horrible person. Uh, they might have not looked like you. Uh, they might not have sounded like you. Uh, but they got born again. Uh, and they'll be citizens in heaven. Uh, they were ragtags. Uh, but they met the master. Uh, and he makes all the difference. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, I got to thinking about this. Uh, there'll be rebels in heaven. Uh, hey, uh, there'll be some uh, that tasted of the grace of God, uh, but then they rebelled, uh, turned their back on God, uh, turned their back on the church, uh, turned their back on the things of God, uh, turned their back on the Father, uh, and went and lived a righteous life, uh, ended up in a hog pen. Uh, some of them may never get out of the hog pen. Uh, but the deal is they met the master. Uh, they might be rebels. Uh, 
They might be out. They might not be what we'd say, uh, plugged in. Uh, but hey, they met the master. Uh, they'll be in heaven. Uh, hey, I'm glad he uh, went to save rebels. Uh, and I'm glad uh, he'll leave the 99 go after a rebel. Uh, and even though a rebel may not come back to him, uh, if they ever got born again, uh, they'll be in that uh, heavenly number. What a blessing. Uh, I'm looking at citizens of heaven tonight. Uh, can I say there'll be a religious crowd over there? Uh, I'm talking about folks that was raised church, uh, uh, knew about church, uh, was raised religious, uh, knew about religion. Uh, uh, some of them was in that religion. Uh, we're all service long days up and kneeling, up and kneeling, up and kneeling, uh, uh, smelling all kinds of incense, uh, taking wafers, uh, drinking out of the same cup. Uh, uh, they had religion, uh, uh, but oh, uh, one day they met the master. Uh, hey, can I say uh, there was some that was in a religion uh, 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 formed by man uh, all about uh, 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 you yourself can become a god, uh, but then they met God. Uh, there were some sitting in Baptist church views. Uh, uh, they'd been baptized. Uh, their name was on the roll. Uh, but one day in a service like this, uh, uh, the Lord began to speak to them. They realized they weren't saved. Uh, and they got born again. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, not all religious people are going to heaven. Uh, but those that were religious that get born again, uh, they're going to be citizens of heaven. Uh, I'm glad he saves the rebels. Uh, and I'm glad he saves the religious. Uh, hey, I'm glad. Uh, hey, he said, uh, whosoever will may come. Uh, can I say this? Uh, there'll be rotten people in heaven. I mean rotten people. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about people that were murderers, uh, fornicators, uh, adulterers, uh, even the effeminate. Uh, I'm talking about people that were wicked. Uh, I'm talking about people like Saul of Tarsus that persecuted the church. Uh, I'm talking about sorry, no good rascals. Uh, they were rotten. Uh, they were vile. Uh, they were wicked. Uh, you said there's no way that crowd's going to heaven. Uh, not in their rottenness. Uh, but if they got born again, hallelujah. Uh, doesn't matter how rotten they were. Uh, hallelujah. I'm glad the blood of Jesus Christ uh, cleanses us from all sin uh, and hey uh, his blood uh, although our so sins be as scarlet uh, they shall be white as wool uh, and I'm glad his blood cleanses every stain uh, and the stain is gone uh, the neighbor may remember them rotten uh, you and I might remember them rotten uh, everybody around them and their family might have remembered them rotten uh, but Jesus don't see them rotten uh, he sees them robed in his righteousness. Uh, hey, what a blessing. They're citizens of heaven. So who else is a citizen of heaven? All citizens of heaven are redeemed. Redeemed. It means rescued. It means saved. We were all on the sea of sin. But the lifeboat came by one day. And the Lord threw us a lifeline through the gospel. And those that accepted the lifeline and got on board, hallelujah, the ship of Zion, uh, are going home. I'm glad I'm redeemed. I'm glad I got rescued. Uh, listen, I was ten and a half years old when I got saved. Now, I don't have the testimony some of you had. There was a lot of things I never ever got involved in but I was still a sinner. I was still vile and filthy. And when I realized I was a sinner, I heard that Jesus would save me. And that night I called upon him. He did that very thing. I know I've told it, and I'm going to tell it again. When I got up from the altar and was mopping tears, my granddaddy looked at me and said, Son, are you satisfied? I said, Yes, sir, I am. I had no idea 50 years ago, Brother Bob, how satisfied I'd be in what Jesus did for me that night. Uh, I was a sinner, but I ain't no more because I've been redeemed. I've been rescued from my sin. See, what takes people to hell is their sin. Jesus came to save us from our sins. 
He came to break the bondage that sin had us in. He came to break the power of Satan in our lives. Uh, and it's only by being redeemed you get to go to heaven. Now let me say this. I wish everybody that was saved would live wholeheartedly for the Lord. I really do. But there's just some who don't. I'm not going to let that affect me from trying my best to live wholeheartedly for the Lord. Amen. Some people get so caught up in looking at others, they stop looking at Jesus. Huh? I get this, I read this last week, I wrote it down, it's on my desk. The fact that Jesus, uh, that Judas betrayed Jesus did not deter the other 11 from following Jesus. And the fact that there are some who choose not to live for the Lord will not deter me Amen. from living for the Lord. Listen, if they're born again, when they get to heaven and they stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, they are going to regret more than we can even imagine Amen. that they didn't live for the Lord. But let me help you with something. When we get to the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to regret that we didn't do more for the Lord. Amen. And I say, I'm just glad in spite of me, in spite of the sinner that I once was, in spite of what I used to be, in spite of what I would have been had Jesus not interrupted yeah. me, Amen. I'm glad I'm a citizen of heaven. Yeah. I don't deserve to get to go, Amen. but I'm a going. And there's nothing anybody can do to keep me from going. Because in the sight of God, I'm already there. Right. Huh? I'm, glad I, I'm glad I got an anchor within the veil that's steadfast and sure, Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Huh? And I'm going to glory. The real question is, are you? Are you a citizen of heaven? He said, preacher, I, yeah, I can go back to a place and a time where I called on the Lord and He saved me. I say, hallelujah. Let me ask you this. You're a citizen of heaven. Are you a member of His church? Say, yeah, preacher, I'm part of the church. Hallelujah. Let me ask you this. Are you involved in the church? Let me ask you this. Is Christ pleased with you at his church? Hmm? Listen, there's a lot of people that are Americans, but they're not good Americans. Huh? There's a lot of citizens of this country that sure don't act like citizens. There's a lot of citizens of this country that won't stop and salute the flag and say the Pledge of Allegiance. A lot of citizens in this country won't stand and take their hat off when the national anthem's being played. A lot of citizens of this country never give thought of those that gave their lives that we can have the privileges we have in this country. Amen. I wonder, as a citizen of heaven, do we stop and salute our king? Do we sing the anthems of praise from our hearts? I wonder if we ever think about him who gave his life so we could be a citizen, but also those that gave their lives and prepared the way so we could have a church here. Those that gave their lives physically and those that gave their lives in working that we could have this church. Uh, I wonder what kind of citizens we are. Now, I think you'd agree with me. If something doesn't change in America soon, the next generation will not enjoy the America that a lot of us have enjoyed. But can I equally say that if some of us don't be better citizens of heaven, the next generation won't enjoy the church that we've enjoyed. I'm glad I'm a citizen of heaven. But what am I doing about where I'm at now? What are you doing? about where we are now. Huh? One of the first fruits of somebody getting saved 
is they can't wait to tell somebody else that they got saved. The night I got saved, I couldn't wait to tell my dad that I got saved. My dad claims to make a profession. I didn't see much fruit in his life. I don't know if he's in heaven or not. But can I say I couldn't wait to tell him? My dad never came and heard me preach a message. Never. I don't know if he's in heaven or not. When he was sick and in the hospital, I went and I told him, I said, look, I went all over the country and even in other parts of the world trying to make certain that people know how to get to heaven. I need to know if you're going. And he assured me he did. He, he, he trusted in Christ. He assured me he prayed to God every day, but I just didn't see much fruit in his life. I don't know. <laughs> Friends, the, the people around us should never question that we're citizens of heaven. They ought to know. Something happened and we check out. Folks ought to know. Yeah, they were saved. Uh, well, what are we doing about telling others? I mean, when you first got saved, you couldn't wait to tell somebody. When was the last time you told somebody how to get to heaven? When was the last time you told somebody, boy, I sure would like to see you in heaven? When was the last time you told somebody, hey, I got saved. Are you saved? You can be. Huh? He said, preacher, I just don't know what to say to people. I know a fellow who went on to become a great proponent of the King James Bible. He was lost, wicked, just like sinners, sinner. And somebody knocked on his door, Brother Bob, up there not far from where you was from, up there in Brown Socialville, knocked on his door. And he said he answered the door with a beer in his hand. And the guy just looked at him and said, Do you believe in God? He said, Well, yeah, I guess I do. He said, The devils believe and they fear and tremble. Left him a track and turned around and walked away. And he couldn't get away from that. And he kept thinking about that. You know what happened? He ended up going to Socialville Baptist Church and getting born again. Amen. You know why? Because somebody just told him. A citizen of heaven concerned about him. Might not even known him, but just had a burden go by that door. I wonder. You going to heaven? If so, are you taking anybody with you? Amen. I promise you. If you don't hear anything else, hear this. A hundred years from now, the only thing that's going to matter is what you did for Jesus Christ. Nothing else is going to matter. It's not going to matter where your address is. It's not going to matter how much money you accumulated in your life. It's not going to matter where you work. It's not going to matter all that you got to see. The only thing that's going to matter is what you did for Christ. Are you a citizen of heaven? Are you a good citizen of heaven? By wanting others to know about Jesus in this wonderful place where we can go. Tonight, we ought to get a burden to be good citizens and to take people with us to heaven. Because really, friend, nothing else matters. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a a song. Maybe get Clint to pick something out for you. Oh, Miss Tina's here. I'm sorry. Miss Tina came in. The Lord spoke to your heart. Why don't you come? If you're a citizen of heaven, you ought to come thank the Lord. Somebody told you about the Lord or you was raised to hear the gospel and that you're saved. Well, maybe you need to come and say, Lord, who's somebody I can be a a better witness to I don't know but all I know is I believe it's coming soon and we need to be good citizens of heaven while they're picking out a song let's pray Father we bless you thank you for Revelation 21 and thank you Lord that I'm part of that bride Lord it was nothing I'd done it was all the work of what you done but Lord somebody told me about you and Lord I'm glad when I called on you, you accepted me. Lord, you saved me. Lord, I like what Brother Sidney Weaver says, saved and satisfied. Lord, I, I think I know just about everybody in here has made a profession. I hope everybody's saved. Lord, if 
we're all saved. Help us not to be that rebel crowd or that ragtag crowd after we got saved. Help us be good citizens. And help us, Lord, to point others to you. Lord, help us to see folks saved. Bless down this invitation, Lord. You know what's needed. Maybe somebody needs to come and pray. Maybe somebody needs to go to somebody and tell them thank you. Maybe somebody's in here is the reason they're saved or reason they're in the church tonight. Maybe somebody needs to just go and tell somebody they've been a real blessing. I don't know. Just help us be good citizens. And Lord, we'll bless you for what you do. Bless this invitation. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.